afternoon. My name is Deacon Lorenzo Stout, and I'll be your worship leader this afternoon. I have the honor of that. We're going to start with our procession missions. First, we have Sister Geraldine Wilson. She's our general mission president. That's right, go and give her a hand. Amen, amen. Under her umbrella of the general mission, we have five circles and the layman's ministry. Our first circle will be our Deborah circle. They're dressed in pink. Our leader is Sister Hortense Springfield. And a Deborah circle is over the soup kitchen. She they support Sir General Truth, women with certain items. Give them a big hand. It's our Deborah circle. Amen. Amen. All right, aren't that pink lovely? All right, our next circle is our Dorcas circle. They're dressed in green. The leader is Sister Camelita Trash. They send cards, they make phone calls to the older saints and the sick and shut in. And they send cards to those in school and prison. All right, next we will have our good circle. Our good circle is dressed in powder blue. The leader is Minister Aaron Pratt. The good circle supports the caring place with the child and every child's ministry. Amen, amen. Now our next circle will be the progressive circle with leader Tara Hicks. They're in purple and they support St. Jude's Children's Hospital and mentors to our young women. Amen. Amen. They're looking really well. Amen. I'm proud of all our circles, but this next one, Ruth, I just so happen to be a member of. <laughs> so I'm going to introduce our Ruth Circle. Ruth Circle, our leader is Sister Susan Wilson. They have the cancer drive. They make blankets for members who are in the hospital. Let's give them a big applause. Amen. To God be the glory for the good things he's done. And last but not least, we have our laymans. Our laymans are dressed in burnt orange. And the leader is Brother Lonnie McDade. They support the Boys Club in Gary, the VFW Post 2151, and for the Children's Scholarships. Amen. Amen. Let's give them another big round of applause for our circles, y'all. Y'all sound like y'all come to bless the Lord tonight. All right. Amen. Now we're going to have our devotional by our deacons. The layman's and the circle. And the good circle. Yes. Our layman's and the good circles will be doing our devotion. Amen. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed 
I'm going to be reading Psalms 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know the Lord is God. He is he, he is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give the thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and His Lord, I mean, His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. I just read Psalms 100. The word of the Lord is blessed. Everyone, bow your heads in prayer. Lift it up, sound God. Everyone bow your heads in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, I come to say thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for this service, oh, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father, for these guest churches, Father, Mount Zion and Pastor Collins, oh, Heavenly Father. And thank you for New Revelation, Father, our pastor, Reverend Turner, oh, Heavenly Father. Bless every circle, Father, that's in this room, oh, Heavenly Father. These Circle Father, they help and reach out to all young people and all people of Northwest Indiana and various, various places and various vicinities, oh Heavenly Father. We lift our hands up, oh Heavenly Father, to tell them, Father, is it, this is the best way, oh Heavenly Father. Ain't no other way, oh Heavenly Father, but Besides the praise and praising you, oh Heavenly Father. Bless all these auxiliaries, oh Heavenly Father, in this church, oh Heavenly Father. Please uh, have mercy, oh Heavenly Father. Give us the mind and the spirit, oh Heavenly Father, to keep on pressing on, oh Heavenly Father. Father, give us the mind to keep our hearts towards you, oh God. Please uh, have mercy. But Father, bless the young people, Father. Please uh, have mercy, oh Heavenly Father. They need you, Father, right now, Father. Touch them, oh Heavenly Father. Please uh, have mercy, oh Heavenly Father. Father, touch us right now, Father. Give us the strength, Father. This mission program is, Father, keep this church and things going on, Father. We are the leaders right now, Father. We got to stand up, Father, for the young ones, oh, Heavenly Father. Please have mercy, oh, Heavenly Father. 
Father, bless us right now as we can do all this service, oh Heavenly Father. We're praising you. We're not praising man. Please have mercy, oh Heavenly Father. But Father, when it's all over down here, Father, when we get to bowing in spots and places, oh Heavenly Father, meet us in that last hour, Father. We can put our head on our breast and breathe our life out sweetly. There are these and many other blessings I ask in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, everybody knows this song, unless you just joined church five minutes ago. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has. I will, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. We return you back into the hands of our... A massive sermon, our worship leader. Here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, then that was a good deacon devotion. Thank you all for participating in that devotional service. Now we will have a welcome by Brother Demetrius Fred. <laughs> all right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, the, the songwriter says, I was glad to be in the service just one more time. So if you're glad to be here, let's give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Now, it calls for me to do the welcome, but I know that the Lord has welcomed us all into his house of worship. Now, I just want you to know that you are here to participate, not to watch. You are here on a mission, and the mission is you are here to worship Jesus Christ by also looking after the people, his people. Um, for those of us that are just not coming, we welcome you. We mount the Mount Zion. We welcome anybody else that has come into the door. You are not a visitor. You are not a stranger. You are a family member in this house. Lord, right now, we thank you right now for just what you have done for us today, Lord. You are welcome. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Now, yeah, we want to be participators and partakers, right? All right. That's time. Uh, before we go on, I'd like to introduce the angel of this house also, my pastor, Pastor Turner. <laughs> And the Honorable Reverend Collins. Amen. It's so good when we get together and dwell together in fellowship in the name of the Lord. Amen. Now it's time for our congregational song. 
This is my mission. All right, praise the Lord, everyone. It's congregational song. We know we got to stand. Come on, y'all. Let's sing. The song says, bless with his goodness. Bless with his good. Bless with his love. Bless with his showers that come from above. Bless with his sunshine. Bless with his love. I'll go on helping. God gives the courage. God gives the courage. Faith leads the way. Onward we travel, happy and gay. Thinking of others, willing to share. Taking God's message ever. Three, remembering others. two copies of that CD. They sound good out there. Now it's time for an emphasis on the theme by Minister Aaron Pratt. I'm sorry, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm a saying I'm apologizing. It's time for acknowledgments from Miss Geraldine Wilson. I got a little ahead of myself. I got excited with that's on my mission. Giving all praise to God, Amen. Pastor Turner, Pastor Collins, and to all the ministers from the Rousman, and to all of you, my father's children. I come at this time to give acknowledgments and to say thank you to New Revelation. First of all, I would like to thank each circle in their participation and especially the layman and good circle who spearheaded this service this afternoon. Thank you so much. Each circle has an opportunity each year to serve and to put on and to develop the service. And they have done a great job, each circle, when it comes their time. So thank you, good circle and ladies. And then also, I want to acknowledge our first and second vice president of the general mission, 
Sister Hortense Springfield, and Sister Carmelita Thrash. Uh -huh. Then we have our secretary, Sister Linda Hill, and treasurer, Sister Mary Brown. And Sister Doris Holloway is our cheer fund, and certainly our teachers, Sister Irene Mitchell and Sister Delcy McAllister. All of you on the program today, all of you who are participating, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being on this service today. Without you, we would have had to struggle. But thank you for volunteering. The Lord will bless. I'd like to thank Sister Hill for her special effects with the uh, carts and uh, goes on the table, the uh, signs she made for us. She does that willingly. And those of you who work in the kitchen and will work after the service in the kitchen, thank you. Thank you so much. Because New Revelation loves to eat. So thank you so much. All right. If there are churches here today that were invited, at this time, other churches other than Pastor Collins Church, I do not want to miss you. So if you are from a church and you're here today to help us in this service, I want you to stand and give the church name. Anyone from a church other than Pastor Collins. All right. Looks like I see Antioch is in the house. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing. Are there any others? All right. Now, we here at New Revelation support a lot of agencies. I'm not certain, but I do know that every child ministry is in the house. Every child ministry. I'm going to ask her to stand and give a remark. Uh -huh. Would you like to? Amen. Amen. And after service, I want you to go down and she will expound further on the importance of every child ministry. All right. Not only New Revelation, you support every child ministry, but let me tell you where your money goes. Brothers Keeper. Brothers Keeper provides shelter and food and clothing and counseling for homeless men. We support the Serenity House. It provides treatment and recovery for men with substance abuse. We support the Sojourner Truth, who provides services for homeless and at-risk women and children. We provide services for Crisis Center, who reach out to youth at risk, runaways, and young people. You support the Salvation Army for underprivileged children and gifts at Christmas. You support the Northwest Indiana Food Bank. Your funds go there. We support the veterans for special projects, the one on 38th and Ridge Road. They shelter veterans who have no job and no place to live to help them get reestablished. That's where your money goes. 
Thank you so much, New Revelation. Thank you so much. Now, I believe I have acknowledged everybody. Are there any other agencies here that I have missed? Please stand. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. We enjoy giving. We enjoy. We love to help because that's what Christ said do. God bless you. One thing God loves is a cheerful giver, right? We can't be God-given on top of that. So now it's time to have an emphasis on the theme, and it'll be by our minister elect, Aaron Pratt. Good afternoon. Okay, so I'm doing the emphasis on the theme. I just want to read the scripture first. We are coming from um, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. For our theme is taking the gospel around the community, around the world. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I with you always to the very end of the age. Around that time, Jesus had completed his work here on earth and he was preparing the disciples for when he goes into heaven. Y'all forgive me, I'm out of breath, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Jesus was giving the disciples their marching orders. The, this passage of scripture was not only for the disciples there that day and age, but also for anyone who calls themselves or called themselves a follower of Jesus Christ. This is what we have been called to do. With that being said, it is very important to remember why we have been commissioned to do this and to always remember our motive behind our commitment. We should not carry this out to earn or expect salvation, but to carry it out because Jesus has already given us salvation and wants us to share it with the world. Everywhere we go, whether it's down the street, across the state, or over the waters, where we, we are to go and make disciples there. No matter the gender, age, or race, we are commanded to make disciples. A disciple is one who listens, understands, and follows Jesus and his directions. We are to help those who are lost or far from Jesus into relationship with him. You ask how? We are to love one another as Jesus loves and share the good news of the gospel and our experiences with others. Not only are we to go, but we are to also baptize, meaning symbolically buried with Christ and risen again in a new life. Being baptized is extremely important. However, it is not the finish line of our faith or our walk with Christ. It is only the beginning. Then we are to teach, not just anything. We are supposed to teach the commands of Christ with understanding, but the key to that is obedience obeying what thus said the Lord. There's a quote that says, knowledge is useless without action. In conclusion, as we continue to carry out our assignment, we must always remember this promise. God is with us, not just for one hour or one day, but at all times, every single day. 
Keep in mind that this walk, this journey we are in is not just for us, but for others. We must let our light shine everywhere we go so that those in darkness may be found. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Amen. All right, now it's time for us to have a selection by our own new uh, Revelation Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you. 
may y'all cannot forget what God's done for you. I mean, you'll never forget what God's done for you. You don't mind if I share a little story with you, do you? I can't forget what God's done for me either. That that wasn't long ago. This finger, I couldn't move. Couldn't figure out, my wife and I couldn't figure out why I was having trouble moving this finger. And going to work every day. It was, wouldn't move so much, you don't know how good, how much you need these fingers to tie your shoes up. I didn't know, the doctor says two weeks out. I tell her, well, I gotta work, baby, we gotta eat. Put a double knot in that shoe. So that's what she did, she tied it tight, two, tight, two knots on it, and went on here to work. But make a long story short, we got to the doctor, and the doctor did the MRI, he took me straight to the MRI and said, you're not going anywhere. There was a brain tumor on this side of my head about the size of an egg that was starving the left side of my body. They say the right side of the brain collect, uh, controls the left side of the body. Well, it's true. I tell you, seven days later, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, he went through those doctors, went inside my head, took that brain tumor out. That was 1995. <laughs> I've been praising him ever since. That's my story. I never will forget. What he's done for me. I didn't mean to go there. That song says, I never can forget it. It just stirred my soul. I can't forget. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my wife. She took care of me. We talking about 50 staples in my head. And sent me home and she dressed me back up. Thank you. Love you. Back to the program. Sorry. God be the glory. Now we're going to have our mission president from Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. She's going to emphasize on a theme. Miss, well, you put your hands together and welcome Miss Sister Arstine Finney. Good evening. To the pastor of this house, and to my own pastor, to all the ministers and all the saints of God. Taking the gospel around the community, around the world, Matthew 28, 19, and 20. The purpose of the church is to make disciples of all kind and all kind of people, wherever you live, wherever you are. We are to continually on this earth do the work that Christ has left for us with a labor of love and a part of caring. Matthew 25, 37, 40, doing God's work. Christian assembly in the church for fellowship, instruction of God's word, praise, worship, and to carry out the great commandment of the Lord, upholding God not yours, God's objection. The good news that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and yet he arose, believing that Christ alone provided our salvation, my salvation. John 3, 16 tells me, for God so loved the world that he gave this son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Putting your trust in Jesus alone, John 6, 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. One tell that to someone. We must go outside these church walls and let the church within our heart reach out to the world with love. Taking 
courage, be prepared in season and out, praying, studying God's word, equipping ourselves to spread the gospel, telling everyone and anyone that you come in contact with that Jesus loves them. Spread that seed of love and let God do the rest. God's purpose for our life still stands regarding us with others say. Don't worry about what that world going to say because they rejected my Savior and your Savior. God's opinion and his love for us is what matters most. So be that servant. Remember, we are all ambassadors for Christ. Our walk, our talk, our lives, and may be sometimes the only thing that the world and people may see. Take courage, be prepared in season and out with patience, lovely, and kindness. Not all of us are called to be evangelists and teachers and preachers, but every last one of us can play a essential part. We all have a story to say. Thank you, worship leader, for telling your story. Be encouraged, and with God's help, let us all proclaim the good news. We must share, we must love, giving hope and comfort to all. Sending funds to other countries, praying, knowing that God has the last say. He and he alone is in control. Run and tell somebody about Jesus, my Lord and my Savior. Thank you. Thank you for the emphasis on that thing. At this time, I would like to thank you all for allowing me to be your, to have the opportunity to be your worship leader. And now I'm going to turn the service over to the pulpit. Amen. As it's up here. Give Deacon Stout a hand. Didn't he do a great job? Great job, Deacon Stout. Amen. Great job. Amen. Everybody that has played a part thus far uh, on the program, it's so good to see you all out. You'll take time out of this beautiful day to be at church. Thank you, all. You could have been anywhere else. You could have been barbecuing, sitting on your deck. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. But you decided to come to 3140 West 21st Avenue and help us celebrate a work that God has called us to. God bless you for sharing. Thank you, Demetrius, for the welcome. Thank you for uh, Aaron, for the emphasis on the theme. This is one of our ministers in training that gave emphasis on give her a hand. Amen. Thank you, Sister Finney, all the time. Amen. You do a great job. Amen. And we just thank God for you, you, and you. Sister Wilson, our uh, director here of our missions. We'll say something about that later. Amen. But we're just grateful for all the circles, all of you that have shared on this, that are sharing on this afternoon. And um, to our guests that I hear from the other churches, uh, our Every Child Ministry guests, amen. Uh, give her a hand. Our friends from Antioch in East Chicago, amen. To the club director from the Boys and Girls Club, amen. We are so grateful to have you here and those who are assembled here on this day. It is offering time, amen. Amen. She said, Sister Wilson, gave you a, uh, a peak, not even a peak, a full screen view of where our monies go. We are a mission-minded church. As you can see, we give money to missions, home mission, and foreign mission. Amen? That's why I hope some of you may personally want to uh, sponsor a child in Africa. Amen. That's why our partner from Every Child Ministry, our church has uh, several children, that, a few children that we sponsor here, our circle groups, along with Mount Zion. Me and Mount Zion, we are sister churches. Amen. 
And we show up at the Every Child Ministry together. Amen. The banquet and everything every year. Amen. We have Kendrick Spirit. So it's offering time. Let's prepare to give our offering. Amen. Give your very best offering. Whatever you can give, this is toward our mission. Minded, when we come to church, we know we're going to give a gift, right? Amen. If somebody missed this morning and you want to give your tithes and offering, even if you're from Mount Zion, we'll give y'all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll give it back. Amen. Amen. <laughs> You all, we can all give in one basket. Amen. We're a family. Amen. We can give all together. Amen. So whatever you have to give, raise it to the Lord. We say a little declaration here. The seed I sow is not the gift I owe, but I give it because of what God has given to me. I'm waiting in expectation for the harvest I will receive because of the seed I'm sowing. I declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you can stand on both sides, follow the direction of the ushers from the rear.
Amen. God bless you all. You all, it is my singular honor to be able to present our preacher for this evening. I asked Pastor Collins about a month and a half ago, maybe two, maybe three, because I knew that I wanted him to come and fellowship. There are times that you need to say stuff privately, and then there are things, times you need to say things publicly. I want to say wholeheartedly, I've shared this with him privately, that Pastor Collins has been a mentor, a friend to me in my life. If, amen. You all, I don't take that lightly, and I'm saying publicly to you because you need somebody in your life to believe in you. Being a younger preacher, younger pastor, Pastor Collins believed in me. I never forget we were at a, a planning session years ago in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I didn't know what this meant, but he touched and said one of the other pastors, he put his hands on my shoulder. He said, let's put him in the barn and start feeding him some hay. Whatever that meant, amen, I'm glad. <laughs> And it was because of Pastor Collins, he didn't know, and I told him this and I shared this with him before. It was because he gave me an opportunity to preach on a regional level. Late night for the moderators department that the national president heard me. That was in 2010. The national president just happened to be at our regional session. And Patty came up to me and said, man, you can preach. And three years later, I was preaching on a national stage. But it was because of Pastor Collins. Gave me many opportunities. He believed in me. Pastor Collins is a man I have a great deal of veneration for. He's a great teacher of the word. He is a great preacher of the word. He is a great pastor. Pastor Collins knows what he's talking about. He has been my mentor. He is a friend to younger pastors and younger preachers. And as my granddaddy would say, he'll help you if you listen. Amen, somebody. So I'm glad he's a friend of New Revelation for many years. Amen. For many years, he is a great friend of Pastor R.T. Mitchell. Amen. So he's a friend of New Revelation. And I'm glad that he is my friend and my mentor. So the next preaching voice after his singing aggregation has sung the number of selections of their choice. The next preaching teaching voice you will hear is that of Pastor William R. Collins. Put your hands together and let's thank God.
God's grace. Hallelujah. God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless. God bless. God bless. What a day we are having. What a time. Thank you. Thank you. Certainly acknowledging the Lordship of Jesus Christ, who is the head of our lives. My great friend and leader. God has done excellent things in exalting his servant. President-elect of the Midwest region. Dynamic pastor, east of one of the greatest churches, one of the greatest churches, east of Klein Boulevard. My friend and brother, confidant, and all of that, uh, he's been an inspiration to me as well, as I have observed him from yonder years, the Lord has blessed him. And certainly to my sons in the ministry, Reverend Marcus Hart and cousin. Reverend Maurice Wilbert Parrish. <laughs> and everybody's musician, but preacher as well. Reverend David Robinson. Y'all think he can sing. You ought to hear him preach. In fact, we were we were blown out of the house this morning by Reverend Marcus. Yeah. Right. I thank God for these preachers. And certainly to the New Revelation family. Ministers and all. Staff administration. Sister Geraldine. Mission. <laughs> And certainly to all of the mission ministries that are here worshiping at this hour and those individuals who have other assignments, every child ministry. Thank God for you all and the organization. We, we, we certainly do our best to do what we can to support you every year. So we thank God for the organization as you represent this afternoon and to all the other representatives of different parachurch ministries throughout the city, Norwest, Indiana, et cetera, et cetera. We thank God for your presence. And to the greatest church west of Klein Avenue. <laughs> the historic Mount Zion Baptist Church. Ten followers of Kenwood Hammond, Indiana. Hallelujah. To all of our deacons, wishes, health care, mission, president, Sister Fanny. I, I thought you were going to lead the notes up here, Sister Fanny. You and Sister Pratt yeah, could have used a few of those. Uh, amen. And to all the other members, and certainly to uh, Sister Collins. Amen. And Sister 
Hart, wife of Reverend Hart. Amen. And to Sister Mitchell. Hallelujah. There was a time we have had down through the years at this church. And just to see the progress that you all are doing now, I thank God. I'm so excited. I know my boy I've been listening to that. Come on, Colin. You know we got to get out of here. <laughs> that was my buddy. Fishing, oh my goodness. We'd have it out on the fish bank. i catch a big fish, and next thing you know, he's fishing next to me. <laughs> Listen, Mitchell, why don't you go over the other side? Still, don't get next to me. Colin, you don't own this water. <laughs> What a time. Memories, this church. And that's turn. I'm so happy and glad that you are being led by God here. You know, carry on. Now let's hear what the Lord has to say with what he has what he has said to me. That I'm supposed to say to you <laughs> amen we've had some difficult and challenging moments in the past few years four or five years there were some difficult challenges one writer allow me to digress a little bit here moving into the message this evening as I was sharing with my preacher the Lord took me and I've been working with this Pastor Turner for about three years during the, as I read an article you know, talking about uh, how we the churches to respond to the issues that we are facing uh, uh, during our pandemic outbreak of COVID-19 outbreak. One writer said there has been five storms that we have encountered in this age or during this time, which has direct effect with the church as well. Uh, these five storms that developed during the COVID-19 outbreak which created enormous stress that was very traumatic all right, all right. for the church. Oh, yes. If you don't mind, I'll list them for a year. Uh, that was the global infirmity, the global sickness, the pandemic outbreak that shut down the church. The doors closed and people were kept from meeting it brought great stress then there was the social instability that developed during this time there were violent protesting the capital was under attack by lawbreakers created stress this continued to plague us. Third one was financial insecurity. The loss of job, business had to shut down. Many had hardships trying to stay afloat. People standing in line for food. Another one, the fourth one, racial inequality. The death of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery. Breonna Taylor and others unveil the racism of this nation. And then five, political instability, which became a national outcry of greed and corruption. The very fabrics of this nation and this institution 
was being unraveled. All of these have had great impact in our midst as a church and as a people. But brothers and sisters, in spite of all that, the church had care, had, had, had carried some issues also. These times speak of the needs of the church regarding the unprecedented challenges at hand. My brothers and sisters, as we come to the lesson today, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3. I know you, when you read this, you may wonder, where did I get this from? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, reading from the New American Standard. Yes, this one particular verse, we shall try to unpack it for the day's message. But one who prophesies speaks to men for ed edification, exhortation, and consolation. Thus to read it. The message is centered around this verse. My brothers and sisters, the post-pandemic ministry reaching the world with the gospel. Post-pandemic ministry reaching the world with the gospel. The context of this verse, if you go back and you say, um, you know, where your homiletics at today, you know, it is in reviving the challenge by Paul, the church at Corinth, as they were exercising gifts in the church. Tongue speaking was being used without interpretation, which became a a exercise of futility. Paul saw the con conditions and he spoke out. Now what he spoke has reference to where we are today. For he says here, for the, but the one who prophesies speaks to men. For Edification, exhortation, and consolation. Uh, my subject says, the post-pandemic ministry reaching the world with the gospel. In conjunction or in addition to those five various storms that I enumerated earlier, the church has its own problem. Help me, Holy Ghost. The church is challenged by spiritual apathy, criticism, lack of zeal, wrong implications of priorities, which has escalated throughout this period of pandemic. And brothers and sisters, with those storms and all of this going on, yet we are called to be the beacon light of hope. Talk about missionary. We all are missionary. So, Sometimes we get it mixed up in our local churches and say, oh, they mission, that's them over there. No, 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 no. We all are missionary. Called by God. To make a difference in this world. Now, now, what Paul spoke here in this particular verse, I'm going to use his language to establish our situation to what God wants us to do as we continue to press on past the pandemic. 
with all of the issues that are facing this nation, this country, and even our church, Paul says here, there need to be a teaching of edification, exhortation, consolation. Now, he, he said that to the Corinthian church because if they don't get that, they won't be able to do what they've been called to do. You see, bragging and boasting about spiritual gifts at that time was not necessary and then using them in the wrong way. So what I want to take out of his saying, his, his challenge there, is those three terms. I want to, but let, let me let me back up because he uses the word prophesize. Uh, here in this portion of God's word, the word prophesize, yeah, it, 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 it's, it, it's it talking about my brothers and sisters uh, teaching. Uh, it's not what we would think is one predicting God's future or uh, being used by God to predict the future. It, it, it's making things plain for the people. And, and if you let me digest that, it would say teaching sent from God that speaks in didactic discourse, which means to sit down and make it plain in order that the people may understand in a clear, intelligent way as they are instructed and enlightened in the word of God. So, so this afternoon, if you don't mind, let me prophesy a little bit. Y'all don't mind that, do you? Uh, uh, the, 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 the idea here is Paul speaks the, the three major issues. Uh, he says here to them, uh, let's, 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 look. there is the first term, edification. Now, 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 you, you, you look at the definition of the original word or the root word is edify. Uh, come from a Greek term meaning build. You know, build. Uh, and, and, and in this term in which he used edification, it means to be building, to go into action, to establish, to, 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 to expand the structure in order that it might be able to do greater things as you would Bill, y'all doing some expansion here, I see. Edifying. Uh, it's, it's to enlarge in order that you might be able to take on greater responsibilities. Edify, edification. To grow larger and become a, 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 a stronger entity in dealing with the issues that you've been assigned to. Uh, my first observation point on dealing with edification is the church must continue to expand their work through a growing knowledge of the gospel. It's very simple. That's, that's very simple. The church must continue to expand through a growing knowledge of the gospel. Uh, 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 you, 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 I thank you all, sister. Y'all did a great job. And, 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 and Matthew says it this way go. As you build, as you develop, as you become stronger in the faith, you are preparing yourselves to reach greater work for the kingdom. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, and, and, and she said, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel. Build the body of Christ. Expand it so that it will be able to reach a greater work for Christ. And, and, and that's what we are here for today. Teaching, 
preaching and reaching that we might be able to do greater things. You remember Jesus said, uh, greater things that you shall do more so than I in his final days on earth. And, and you and I have been called by God to grow up unto him as a vessel fit for his use. To establish a greater work within our lives so that we might do a greater work in the world. The world is in need of salvation. The only way we can do it is that we must continue to spread ourselves. We must continue to move out into the areas where there is a lack of gospel in order that the name of Jesus will be known throughout. Edification. To strengthen the faith in order that we might reach the world. It is done by a systematic course of studying and teaching of the word of God, learning and training in God's word, enable us to grow and develop and become stronger witness for the gospel ministry. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Solid teaching of the word of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> the second thing here, the third, second thing he says in prophesizing and teaching that sent from God to make it plain unto the people that they might know and understand is he's used the term here exhortation. Exhortation is a term to send to move out, to move forward. It, it suggests, brothers and sisters, uh, to arouse. To, uh, to motivate. If we are going to do what the word of God said, not just learning it and building ourselves up as one build up muscles in a gym exercise class, now we must get that, take all of that training and that development and get out and exercise it by doing what the purpose for which we have been called. It suggests, my brothers and sisters, to uh, come exhort, arouse, and get individuals to make a lifelong commitment to engage in the performance of duty. Now, what that simply means is that we must be motivated. Motivation comes as a result of what we have been called to do. Regardless of the challenges that we have, we must understand that our motivation is to be so that we don't become lazy. Second observation, the church must be motivated to become doers of the word. We, we, we hear that all the time, be doers of the word. I have learned that once we get ourselves in a position to address the issues, now it's time to engage. And exhortation is that motivation that comes from knowing that we've been called by God. To do a great work for God. Somebody ought to help me. Uh, Paul says it in Romans 1. I am eager. I, 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 I'm ready. I, 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 I'm motivated. I'm at a point now where I just can't sit still and, and hold all this gospel. For I am ready to preach. I'm so eager that I cannot contain myself my expressions. Then he goes to chapter 12 and says, present your bodies. Present, you, you, you've been trained. You've been in school. You've been in mission meetings. You've been in conference. You had the Bible taught to you. Now present yourself. 
as a living sacrifice. Holy for your reasonable service. What reasonable legal term means? That which is required of you. You, you ought to be able now to do what God wants you to do. Being motivated means that you can't sit at home any longer. You got to get up. When, 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 when the call comes, you're on the battlefield. Help me, Holy Ghost. I, I'm on my way. I am a debtor. And I can't sit down on this job. Churches, as we come together to teach and treat mission and all of the other ministries of the church, we must get up and move forward. Go into the world teaching them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Exhortation means that we don't think it, it's a chore, or that it's a difficult task. It doesn't matter how difficult it is, but the motivation because God's love constrains me. And I can't help but yell out now, send me, Lord. Hear my exhortation. Motivated to carry the gospel to the world, around the community, and all the other places. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yes, my brothers and sisters, then he says in his third. Come in here. Consolation. Yes, my brothers and sisters, consolation. Consolation is from the Greek word paraclete. John's gospel. The comforter. Come alongside. As we go out into the world. And as we prepare ourselves for the battle that we face from time to time, the barber says, he said, consolation. That means, as he said in John, the helper. The one who bring along encouragement. But sometimes the way it get very difficult. The lows get heavy. But Paul says here, it's time for consolation. Consolation suggests that, that this work is too difficult for us. For our human skills and ability. But Jesus said, I'm going away. But I'm going to send you somebody. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, he, he, when he comes, uh, uh, there's going to be some changes made. Yes, yes, yes. And my third observation with consolation is the church must rely upon the supernatural power of God yes. to fulfill its ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The church must have the supernatural power of God. Brothers and sisters, we cannot go it alone. In Acts 1 and 8, he said, but wait upon the Holy Ghost. When he has come to empower you, then you are able to go out into the world beginning in the community <laughs> and the surrounding areas and the uttermost parts of the world. The brothers and sisters, we can't do it in our own strength. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. If we're going to train and be motivated and while we are trained and motivated our uh, and we are out on the battlefield. I want you to know that Jesus said, and lo, I'll be with you always. Ain't God good this morning. Mount Zion, the new revelation. Why don't you rise up and get yourself together? 
and let us go out in the field of mission knowing that we're not alone because he promised to be a very present help in trouble. Do y'all know that? And I thank God this morning or this evening uh, that I'm not alone this morning. And every task that he designs us, uh, let us not be like the boy, the, the seven that he sent out and came back shouting and saying, uh, Lord, uh, even the, the demons and uh, were subject unto us. Uh, but Jesus said, wait a minute, boys. Uh, uh, don't take no credit for yourself. Uh, you see, uh, you were not able to do that in your own strength. Uh, that's why the church must be careful uh, and not get up to so upset that you think you're, you're doing it by yourself. Uh, but it is... Uh, God, the Holy Ghost, uh, working in you. Uh, Paul put it this way, uh, my brothers and sisters, for uh, it is God uh, at work uh, to do uh, and will of his good pleasure. You see, when I wake up in the morning uh, and I began to start my days, uh, when I get to the church house and I began to do the work, uh, when we establish the print ministry, uh, I know that we're not alone because my Savior, my God is with me. For it is He that is directing me. And I know if I just hold out, if I just press on, Pastor Turner, if I just keep on going, if I don't stop, if I don't faint and well doing. If I don't grow weary, I know I shall, I shall observe and accomplish my task. So thanks today, as you go forth today, remember our assignment, the post-pandemic ministry, reaching the world with the gospel. If you follow the pattern that's laid out in the Bible, you will be successful. But you are teaching and teaching and, and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Some glad morning if you just hold on be faithful unto death. You got a crown coming. If you be steadfast and unmovable but always doing what God calls you to do. He will supply all of your needs according to his riches. Won't he do it, children? Won't he supply your needs? Won't he keep you right up in an upside down world? He'll make you the head, not the tail. Ain't God good this evening? Hallelujah! Pray! Oh, I'm so happy that I got him and he got me all day long. I'm satisfied. I'm so satisfied that I know him. But he is my rock in a weary land. He's my water in my place. And when I get to an impasse, he's my breeze over the Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on, mission. Tell the story how we got over. God brought us all the way. All the way. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Let's thank God. Hallelujah for a word from the Lord. There may be somebody in this house, amen, that is not active in a local church. You're not living just to live. 
God has anointed and ordained this moment for you to become a disciple of a local church. If you're on the west side of Klein, you can go to Mount Zion. If you're on the east side of Klein, you can come to New Revelation. Two of the best churches you can find on the east side of Klein. We just want you to be saved. And if neither one of these churches are to your liking, we can recommend a church of your choice. We just want you to be saved. We want you to enlist in the army of the Lord. So we offer Christ to you. We offer him. We offer Christ. Oh, my sister. He'll give you brand new life. Life abundantly. All you have to do is come. Oh, oh, come. How many of you already enlisted in the army of the Lord? Well, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for this word that has been sent to us by your servant. Restore him right now, oh God. Send your ministering angels to him to replenish all that he has poured out. Thank you for this word, oh God, to challenge us to this word of prophecy, this word of consolation exhortation oh God edification that will assist us and motivate us as we go along the journey Father forgive those of us who have not been as committed to the work Father thank you for another chance to get it right we ask Father that we have a renewed mind as we have been challenged here on today to be about our father's business because grandmama and them said don't let them catch you with your work undone. We don't know when you will return, but we don't want you to catch us with our work undone because we want to hear those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Thank you, oh God. And we pray, Father, that those that are in here will recommit themselves to the call of mission because all of us are missionaries. Bless right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put our hands together. You may be seated. Thank you, deacons. We pray, oh God, for that you receive something in your spirit. Pastor Collins, don't know for those who are at church, look at how God works. His message was consistent with mine. That means God is trying to tell us something. That we ought not to be lazy and lethargic in the work. I love when God makes connections like that. Because he's trying to tell us something. Thank you, Pastor Collins. I told you he'll help you if you listen. Amen. Thank God. I don't know, Pastor Hart, what you do this morning. You rose up to preach in him. Amen. Reverend Hart, amen. To these preachers, our preachers, amen. That I hear, amen. Sister Allen, we're praying for her. She lost her husband, one of our ministers here. Amen. She's in the back, Reverend uh, Dr. John A. And I'm um, and training Aaron. Amen. And those that are here so great. This was a great fellowship. I'm so proud of our mission ministry, our mission leader. Amen. <laughs> Sister Geraldine Wilson and those that work with her, Sister Hortense, the first vice and the second vice, Sister Carmelita, in every mission circle. Uh, it is so good, you all. For many years, the good circle has not been represented. And I'm so glad that we have the good circle represented amen that's that circle between the ages of 18 and 34 amen and we're glad that we have uh, five or six circles with our layman amen and i'm so grateful thank you all once again for taking the time out to be encouraged so we can rally ourselves so we can be motivated i'm telling he showed enough preach y'all lord have mercy thank you pastor Colin. that's good preaching that is good sound that's 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 homiletics. Homiletics is the art and science of preaching. Preaching is an art form. 
And when you hear good preaching, amen. I got to acknowledge I'm ready to preach. Amen. My soul ain't got happy. Amen. Because so now tell them folk that be trying to prophesy to you. Amen. Say, teach me. Don't just try to predict my future. Because that's closely related to divination. Oh, that's another song. Amen, somebody. Amen. So we thank God. Amen for this great preaching, this great teaching. I'm telling you, now I can go home and take the rest of my house and sit in my garage. I didn't heard a word from the Lord. Amen. Now I can go listen to a little Johnny Taylor. I'm sorry, y'all. Amen. <laughs> amen. Tyrone Davis. Amen. Amen. My soul has been edified. My soul has been encouraged. I'm ready to run on. I'm telling you a little bit further in the Lord. Thank you, Mount Zion. New Revelation, let's thank God for Mount Zion. Thank God for Antioch that you all took time out of y'all's schedule. All these deacons, our deacons that are here sharing, our laymans, our media personalities, you all, it takes a lot of work to work these cameras and this sound. Even if uh, musicians, amen, that are here, thank God for each and every one of you. I don't think there's nothing else. I, Sister Wilson, do you have remarks? Or? You can have one of the two things, dinner or refreshments, amen. Take you something to go home. Our mission circles, uh, they'll go down and serve you, get you something before you go home and do whatever you're going to do. I told y'all what I'm going to do. Amen. Pastor Collins, we're going to bring you back. Amen. With closing remarks. Amen. Give him a hand another time. Thank you, Pastor Collins. He's showing up. He's showing up to preach. Amen. glad he said closing remarks not final remarks <laughs> certainly to all of you it's, it's been a blessing to be here again to see all of you that I know and those that have come on since I've been here and to all the guests that are here throughout the northwest Indiana thank God for all of you the other churches Antioch and others Thank God for you, and certainly to our deacons, and God bless you. Health care, our ushers, and our musicians, and choirs, and, and certainly to the preachers, and to all of you. We, well, we, we done been to one good church. We're going to close out and go to another good church, <laughs> west of Klein. God bless you. There'll be nothing else. Again, thank you all, Mount Zion. Thank you all, choir. Thank you, everybody. You know, uh, Reverend, this is about the first official visit we've had since the pandemic. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Maybe one or two somewhere along the line back. But, uh, yeah. but God bless you. That is better stand. <laughs> in heaven we thank you for your riches untold that is so abundantly multiplied unto us daily and for this evening father we thank you for the gathering of your people that we might be edified that we might be, Lord, uh, exhorted and consoled. The terms that we use, Lord, to spur us to greater works for you. Thank you for this church's pastor and the mission and all of the ministers and the official staff and all those who make up this congregation. We thank you for the fellowship hour. Now, Lord, as we prepare to leave down from here, 
we've been invited to partake of refreshments and whatever may be. And we ask that you would bless it and that it be proper fitting for the nourishment of our bodies. But most of all, thank you for your feeding us through your spirit, our souls. Now to him is able to keep us and to present us forward before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only wise God through Jesus Christ. The glory, majesty, dominion, power before all times, now and forever. And all the people of God sing together.